Well, good morning from the Camino de Santiago. Um, it's about 7.30 in the morning, and I'm leaving Belorado, and uh, sort of lost track of the days, didn't realize that today was Sunday, so there's uh gets a little difficult to find places that are open sometimes on a Sunday. The uh, place we were staying has a nice little restaurant in there, but there was nobody in there. Nobody, uh, it wasn't open uh, when I left. So, uh, and there was no nothing uh, indicating when it would be open. So uh, rather than wait around, I just hit the road. And there's no, no bakeries open. Uh, there's a few of us walking uh, this morning. The sun's just now coming up, and uh, we sort of uh, s stumbled on a gas station that had a little convenience store, so uh, we were happy to get any kind of cup of coffee, uh, something warm. It's cold out right now. Uh, it's about uh, 6 degrees Celsius, not sure what that is in Fahrenheit, but uh, yeah, it's a little chilly. I kind of uh, miss my warm jacket. I had planned on October being a little cold, but uh, but I thought we would have some uh, you know pretty warm mornings here for the first few weeks, and um, but uh, but today this morning it's a little bit chilly. And uh, I uh, didn't really bring a warm layer. I sort of trimmed down my pack. I have, a, I have my raincoat and three shirts, three very thin, lightweight shirts, that, uh, and I'm wearing two of them. And I did bring uh, my little, uh, you know, my knit cap that's uh, for colder weather. So I got that on my head. I got my rain jacket on, two shirts, my rain hood pulled up over my head to trap some air in there. And uh, so it's not too bad as long as you keep moving. Um, <clears throat> so uh, it's supposed to get up to the mid-20s today. That's again Celsius, so that's something in the, I think in the 70s, 75 maybe, something like that. Uh, so uh, yeah, I think the rule of thumb, something is like... Uh, 16 degrees Celsius is 61 degrees Fahrenheit, and we're down around 6 right now. I don't know what that translates to, but uh, but it's chilly. So, uh, yeah, but um, could, uh, could potentially have a long walk, a long day today. Um, again, I'm leaving Belorado, and I'm supposed to go to Atapuerca, which is 29 kilometers. That would be the longest day yet for me. Uh, there's some people that did some long days like that because uh, they were using a different, a different map. And uh, but uh, this this would be my longest day yet if I if I go there. There's a town that. Uh, I forget the name of it, but uh, something. There's a town that's a little shorter distance, 23 kilometers or something, and then so I could stay there, and uh, uh, and then the the next day is uh, Burgos. So Burgos is the is sort of the last uh, big city before the Meseta, and so. Uh, I figured <clears throat> that's my kind of my last opportunity to find decent stores, you know, a decent sporting goods store. So I'll, since the weather seems to be cooling, I'll I'll see if I can find a <clears throat> decathlon store. A decathlon has is sort of a sporting good that has cheap stuff, <laughs> and uh, but they do have these uh, fleece uh, jackets that are like twelve bucks. So they're very reasonably priced, and and uh, and uh, I had the opportunity to buy one of those a few days ago that I should have, but uh, I was focused on something else. 
So, uh, yeah, I'll pick up a, a fleece layer or something, some warm layer. Because uh, if the mornings are going to be cold like this, I'm going to want something. And uh, my pack is so light right now that uh, it's uh, I can afford to stick something in there. And I think the, the fleece layer I was looking at only weighs a few ounces, maybe 100 grams or something. Really lightweight, but, you know, you put it under the rain jacket and it sort of would be enough. So, um, yeah, so I'll do that in, in Burgos and uh, sort of finish off my pack. But it's, uh, yeah, it's real, I got it real comfortable and lightweight. And uh, the other thing is, <clears throat> you know, I look at, uh, I kind of look around the the room when everybody's, you know, in the bedroom when everybody's sort of fiddling with their packs. And, uh, you know, if you bring too much stuff, it's just too hard to manage. There's, you know, the bunk beds don't really have enough room to sit up straight so there's just barely enough room. It's like a, you know, like a like a bunk bed you'd see on a military ship or something, where there's just enough room to crawl in there, and uh, so um, not a lot of not a lot of room to sit on the edge of the bed and go through your pack and look for stuff. Every once in a while, one of the places will have a have a chair or something in the room that you can sit on. But uh, yeah, it just gets to be a pain when you're having to drag your whole pack outside to find a place to sit and tear it apart and all your stuff laying all over the place so so my goal is always to be efficient you know sort of streamline make sure everything is has a purpose and um and that there's nothing nothing extra you know you leave your dance shoes at home and your evening you know clothes the fancy stuff because people quickly realize that nobody's dressing up in the evenings. You know, they're putting on a jacket and some sweatpants and flip-flops or something like that. And uh, just sitting around, usually going to bed early. Um, but uh, yeah, so people quickly figure that out and then they, they take all, they remove all the stuff that, you know, that they haven't worn yet and they either ship it home or they send it to uh, Santiago with the luggage storage uh, service and um, so uh, yeah so I watch you know everybody kind of trying to find things in their backpack and it gets um, yeah so mine's just basically I have my sleeping bag in there three shirts a pair of pants with uh, that I bought a few days ago the pants with zip off legs uh, so that I have shorts or pants and I'm wearing the pants right now because it's cold. And then I also have my hiking shorts that uh, are basically like a swimsuit. They're just real comfortable to walk in. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, and, uh, and my rain jacket. So there's not really much in my pack. I can find everything very easily if I go digging in the dark. And, uh, and then in the morning, it's not a huge ordeal to, uh, you know, if I wake up early, I don't have to turn on the lights really. And, and uh, I can kind of stuff everything in my backpack, you know, just shove the sleeping bag down in there until I get outside. But there's just not a lot of stuff. So, and uh, besides that, it's just so much nicer to carry a light weight backpack. Um, so I barely notice that it's on right now. Um, so, uh, yeah, Oops, somebody dropped something here. What did they drop there? Headlamp. Huh. Uh, they'll come back for it, maybe. Somebody will grab it. Um, I'm sort of anti-headlamp. Uh, but, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, the sun's just just coming up, and it's nice and it's quiet out here. Uh, so, anything, everything's feeling good. Feet are feeling good. Uh, I had one little tiny blister, and I drained it yesterday, and, and it doesn't 
seem to be infected or anything, so I'm not I, I'm not really feeling it right now. And my knees are in good shape. I don't have any pain there. So, yeah, I'm just uh, in good shape. Uh, and i um, hoping that this next town might have a bakery or something that's open. I'm, yeah, it's just sort of hard when uh, you get that morning where there's no... There's no bakery with real food, real coffee. You got to go to a, you know, you're lucky to find a gas station with fake pastries. <laughs> you know, whatever whatever that was this morning, I ate. It was not a pastry. It was not real. It was something, some sort of glue extruded out of some machine, and then dipped in fake chocolate and sealed up in a package, and. Uh, so, um, but you don't know when your next opportunity is going to be on a Sunday. So, uh, you take what you can get and, uh, but he did have actual coffee with actual milk. So that was nice. But, uh, yeah, I'm hoping this town has some kind of bakery with real, real bread and a real coffee. And I'll sit and wait for a little while till it, till it warms up a bit. And, um. But I'm not going to hold out hope here. It's just uh, looks like a sleepy little town. Maybe maybe one of the residents there will invite me in. They'll see me and think, yeah, let's, let's let this guy in our house. Let's just give him coffee or make him some breakfast. So, yeah. Well, that's it. I'll see if I can get some decent pictures today and put them together with this. Don't really uh, have any other thoughts today. I'm in, I'm just in good shape. I had, had some ups and downs and, you know, uh, some down moments. You just sort of, I, I'm, tr- I, I'm trying to figure it out. You know, you sort of get, uh, uh, I don't know, hopeful that you're going to meet people that you really click with that you know meet your soulmate or something and and uh and then you meet people and you realize that the that the relationships that are developing are not really that meaningful that they're just sort of superficial and and then the group sort of breaks up and you're you're feeling alone again and um and then so you have the uh you know, sort of the letdown that you're, you know, that you're sitting here going, ah, oh, I, you know, now I got to walk the rest of this thing alone. <laughs> and, uh, but then something, you know, it's like I say, something else happens. And, uh, so I got, uh, I was sitting there, you know, I mentioned yesterday our group broke up and, uh, we got, you know, we were sort of a group of four. I, I, uh, I think I was the one that grabbed everybody and put them together. They were all German, so I just sort of... I met one on the first night in St. John. We had dinner together, and uh, just in our little uh, hostel that we were staying at. And then uh, and then I don't know where I found this... Oh, I know where I found it. Yeah, the second one was staying uh, in the same place on the, in Ronces Baez. But, uh, you know, they were all, we were in the room with all the beds and she was uh, about three or four beds down and and um I forget what she uh <coughs> she asked me something I was kind of you know I, I was kind of surprised because you know you you walk with people on the first day and nobody knows each other but she grabbed me and asked me something uh that got my attention and we just sort of, you know, got introduced that way and chatted. And then I think, I, I think, uh, you know, one of the first things you ask is where are you from? And then you find out Germany and I go, Oh, I met a German uh, person last night. And, uh, yeah. And then we sort of put those three of us together. And then the next day, uh, I was at a cafe and there was, uh, another, another, uh, young woman that had, uh, you know, this uh, kind of bright purple, purplish violet backpack. Uh, you know, most of the backpacks are black or earth tones or something, but hers was like a kind of a bright purple. So I commented on this. So that's a nice backpack. You're, 
must be a happy person. And uh, so anyways, that was that was Lisa from Germany also. And I went, oh, I have two other friends from Germany that are, you know, right behind me. And so we all sort of sat together that day uh, at the cafe and uh, about, you know, a little ways into the walk and and uh, ended up walking together the rest of the day and and got along okay. And so now Lisa uh, has decided to go home because her foot uh, has a problem. She might have strained a muscle in her foot or something. It was bothering her the first day. Um, and then... Uh, and then Catherine uh, had some uh, inflammation in her, in a lower leg muscle. We were thinking it might be shin splints or something, uh, something that was going to take a long time to to heal and that she might not be able to finish. Uh, but she went to a doctor and they said, no, it's just like some inflammation and gave her, uh, gave her some kind of medication for it, uh, probably... Uh, a uh, anti-inflammatory something or other, um, and, uh, and she took a bus to Burgos um, so that she could rest for a couple of days and stay off of it until we get there. So I'll be there tomorrow afternoon. If I go to Atapuerca today, I'll end up in Burgos in the afternoon, and uh, so. Uh, yeah, so Catherine's staying there, and uh, Bianca has uh, uh, stayed at the place I was at last night. Yeah. Sorry, I got cut off there. And we were trying to figure out which way to go. Sorry, I got cut off there. We were trying to figure out which way to go. Some confusion. And uh, so anyway, uh, last night I was sitting there at dinner. I was talking about how sometimes things just just happen to, uh, you know, to get you back in the right mood. And um, I was sitting there at dinner and got a text message from uh, another German woman, uh, Annette, that I met the other day. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, so she's... Um... So Annette uh, is, is walking with her mom. Her mom's, I think, 73. And she's just like a, a tank on the trail here. Uh, I have trouble keeping up with her. Um, oh, look at that. There's like a, a church or a temple that's built right into the cliff. But we're not uh, on that part of the trail that's way across the valley there. Interesting. Anyway, uh, so Annette's mom is uh, 73 and just marches along. They did two like two days back to back that were like, 28 or 29 kilometers uh, and uh, she's just healthy uh, she doesn't speak any English so um, <clears throat> but I had come up uh, had been walking you know sort of not with them but we, we were all on the same uh, stages on the same days and so I'd seen her uh, you know and said hi a couple of times but I you know I could see it looked like she was with her mom and I'm, I'm sort of careful about invading people's space when uh, it looks like they're they're not there to you know they weren't hoping to meet me on the Camino so they uh, you know she's with her mom they're having a mother-daughter trip and, and uh, so you don't want to butt in and, and uh, interfere with whatever conversations they're having so I'm sort of careful to not do that and uh, but um, now, the other morning we were leaving La Grano. It was early in the morning, and and uh, the sun it was still dark. The sun wasn't up yet, and uh, and I had uh, there weren't many people out yet, so I was coming up behind them, and I said good morning, and she turned around and went oh good morning, and and uh, and I walked with them for like ten seconds, you know while we were uh, you know you try to uh, you know get past them. I'm walking slightly faster, and then I commented i said oh look there's a bakery open and she said oh yeah you should go there <laughs> and uh, i took that as uh, as a uh, you know a comment to leave them alone and move along move along sir and uh i went all righty then and uh 
went over and uh, got myself a coffee and a couple of croissants. And, uh, and then I started walking and they were somewhere way up the street, but I walked faster than them. So I ended up uh, quickly catching up and she turned around and said, boy, you walk fast. And uh, so I just said, no, you are just walking a little slower than me is all. And, uh, and then she asked, you know, asked me my name and, and you know, where am I from, all the, the normal stuff. And uh, so we started talking. We ended up walking together for about an hour. And uh, she's an interesting lady. She's, uh, she works uh, remotely, uh, tech, uh, web, uh, some kind of design, uh, kind of a computer design sort of thing. And uh, she's the first person I met who has a similar philosophy uh, as me. She just works like six months a year and then she travels uh, she's been all over India and uh, y you know and, and uh, obviously all over Europe and and you know just a bunch of places and uh, and I believe she just goes by herself I thought you know that's adventurous and she's got you know she's uh, got a lot of knowledge studies things like Buddhism and you know and things that peaceful nature and and so we, and she's the first person uh, who I really talked to where she, she sort of did all the talking, um, you know, which is good, to other, you know, because I tend to, if the other person doesn't take over, I tend to run, it, run off at the mouth a little bit with people. And um, I'm sort of desperate for attention, I guess, desperate for somebody to talk to. I got all this uh, stuff saved up, but she, she sort of did all the talking and... And then I, uh, um, I uh, commented that the that I wasn't sure if uh, she wanted to get rid of me or not because she told me to go to that bake. You know, she told me, "Yeah, why don't you go to that bakery then?" And she said, "No, nah, that wasn't what she meant by it." So um, anyway, we uh, walked for about an hour talking, and then separated, and, and then. Uh, i seen her a couple more times since then, but she ended up texting me uh, last night just to check in, which I thought was interesting. She sent me a little uh, video clip of a Buddhist uh, guy that she listens to, and um, so, uh, so I listened to some of it last night before I fell asleep, and uh, she's... She's supposed to go to out of Puerca today, so even though she went a little further than I <coughs> yesterday, um, she's got a short day today, uh, and uh, but she'll be in out of Puerca. So if I do the full 29, then we'll end up in the same place, and maybe maybe uh, I'll see her there. Otherwise, we'll we'll both be in Burgos tomorrow, um, and then I might. Uh, Take a day off in Burgos again because it's a big city. It's kind of nice. Well, the sun's coming up. Got to get a picture here. So, uh, yeah. So, um, anyway, so even though my group is sort of splitting up, you know, maybe, uh, <coughs> maybe we get a couple more people in. And then we're getting close to the Meseta. A lot of people drop out at Burgos because... They don't want to do that. They want to take a train forward to Soria or something. Uh, so they skip the, the middle section, which, you know, again, my philosophy is that uh, you got to eat your vegetables before you have your dessert. And, uh, you know, then the meseta is what makes the last third of the trip much better. You just, you know, you kind of fight your way through these small towns and fight the boredom and people bond I think a little a little more in the meseta because there's there's not much else to do um, some of these towns only have 50 people in them and there's one store and it happens to be owned by the family that runs the place you're staying you know so it's uh yeah it's a little uh thinly populated out there and, and um, but it's a you know nice part of the journey so 
anyway, so maybe maybe our group will reorganize and and uh, get a few more people in. Um, you know, it's just nice. I, I was thinking about the last time uh, I did this. Um, you know, the nice thing was at the end where you actually have people that you spent time with that you haven't seen for a while. And then suddenly there they are, you know, right there in the square in front of the cathedral. Um, you know, so you, so you kind of want to have have some kind of group you're spending time with. Um, and uh, so, yeah, so hopefully I can get enough of a group that sticks together uh, that 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 I have that kind of experience. I, the the uh, cathedral was basically closed last time. They they had they were under they had construction going on renovations, so they had the front door blocked off. You couldn't go in through the main portal there. Um, and they sort of let you come in a side door, and and uh, they had a lot of the cathedral blocked off. So I'm um, I'm hoping they actually have the services where you know they're doing the full service and and so i can get that experience and uh it'd be nice if there were people there that i know that uh are that that uh are there with me so uh so that's it yeah it's a beautiful morning the sun's up and man it's starting to uh you know peek over the mountains and the sunlight's kind of skimming across the the fields here uh which is Kind of nice. So, I think there's another town. I'm ever hopeful that there will be a bakery open or a cafe or someplace for for a decent cup of coffee. Not in any hurry today. The beds are getting easy to find. Uh, the first first few days, everybody's in a panic, booking ahead, and and uh, you know, and some people get uh, you know they end up without a bed and they have to go take a taxi or walk to the next town and see if they can find something there but after a week uh, it starts to thin out and now we're at a point where the places are only half full uh, the room i was in last night had like 10 bunk beds so like 20 20 total beds and half of them were empty so everybody had a bottom bunk and nobody was in the top and uh, so it was nice and quiet in the room and it seemed like everybody slept pretty well and uh yeah, so I'm not I'm not worried about getting a bed anymore. That's sort of a nice part of the trip where you're not, you know, you're not pre-planning. You're not worried about, you know, where am I going to stay? Uh, you're just sort of uh, walking along. It allows you to be more in the moment uh, every day and and decide where you want to stay in the moment. Like when you feel like stopping, you end up at a town and you think. And you sort of stop and you look around and you go, let's see, five more kilometers or do I just stay here? And so that's uh, a good place to be. And so that's where we are. Uh, I don't know where I'm going to be staying. It might be out of Puerca if I've got the energy or it might be some town before that. But either way, I'll be in Burgos all the same tomorrow. And uh, it won't uh, won't be any different. So... So we'll just we'll see when I get there.